Okay. <clears throat> uh, hello. I would like to order a burger, please. Okay. I mean, I mean, usually you would just say what you wanted, like you pulled up to Burger Spot, but that's fantastic. Um, I would like a cheeseburger and uh, Got it. soda and some fries. Got it. And those are Carolina hotcake fries, or do you want the blisters? Uh, I c are the blisters uh, hotcake style? Yeah, hundred percent. They're blasting, man. Okay, I'll have I'll have, I'll have those. Great. I mean, uh, can I take your order? Well, welcome to D Denny's. Is there is there supposed to be another? What? We, yes. we'll get, we've been getting interference. Hey. No, no, don't listen to him. Hey, can I get your order? Daryl. Curly fries. Daryl. Yes, Daryl. It's interference, man. We got, I mean, okay, go ahead and do the order, but you're going to have to go across the street. Well, I, he's this, how come I can hear him? Why is there two speakers? Well, okay, so. Tell we, him. We just bombed, so we just bombed Syria. Right. And so the Russians are responding with a massive cyber attack, and what's happened is they've created an interference wave that's essentially all the fast food restaurants have mixed up with each other. So they knew the number one way to hurt America was to fuck up the fast food distribution chain. And it's working. Seven of our customers committed suicide last week. We're I going for eight. Can I take your order? I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't you just I have can't. to cross the street. I just, just, just I cross just, the street. No, sir. I, 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 I just. Uh, uh, why, why do I need to go across the street to get? You're the same restaurant. If the Russians you want to order your food from different. me, you can. You, I'm I will trying take to order, order from you. But I am in another restaurant three blocks up. Whoa. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> All right. We get we get time and a half. Yeah, it's so cool per suicide. Thank you, Putin. Poot. It's Harmon Town wow. time. <laughs> Harmon. Harmon Town. Here we go. Oh. Presenting. Oh. You got to get off the stage. Here we go. Okay, do I start now? Here we go, friends. Welcome to the pre-singularity, pre-World War III, Harmontown, presenting your favorite game master, Rob Schraub. There he is, king of the town, Dan Armand! Yo, 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 rapping, rap, rapidly rap at the top of the show, rap. Put the music in your heart and your feet. Fuck your mama until she's rad like a beat. Get the beat in the street. Make your voice go up a couple notches neat. I'm gonna fuck your mama with my dick. I'm not doing anything weird, it's nothing sick. Just gonna take her out, take her back home, and shout into her pussy like a paper bag. And then I'll pop it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're still we're still working out the uh, the. Uh, I I like this new format. Yeah, we're still working with the format. This is fantastic. We could do this uh, every week. Change nothing. We opened with uh with the uh, drive-through sketch, a classic. Classic. Video. And, uh, a little updated. Per, uh, there was some some added updates. Of, yeah. Of of uh, topical news. That's nice. right. Because it's coming. If yes. You're, if this is your first uh, your first episode of Harmon Town, you've you, not for me. You, you you shouldn't. This isn't the this isn't like the other episodes. This is a very special episode. Uh, our comptroller is Duncan Trussell. Thanks Hello, for coming. Everyone. Thank Hi. you. Good to be here. Our our game master is uh, uh, Rob say? Schraub. Game master. Game master. Rob Schraub, the game master. You're filling in as game master. Yeah. I think you're missing a consonant. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. What are you accusing him of? Gaslighting. 
Yes. Um, and uh, there's no audience. Uh, uh, You're losing. Uh, You're losing the audience. Mm-hmm. Is it? Ba- I mean, am I allowed to leave the podium and get myself vodka? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. Um, do they yeah. have? Do Do we have? Uh, Cokes or sodas? Do you have Coke Zero? Do you have um, uh, Crystal Pepsi? <laughs> Do you have um, Cherry Seven Up? I don't know what else we have besides vodka. Just, just what we'll about La Le- Croix? Will someone please bring Rob a non-alcoholic beverage? All right, guys. I just need something sweet. Um, wow, is- I wouldn't mind. Wouldn't mind uh, getting through this one kind of quick. Which uh, one? The show? Yeah. What's wrong? Why don't you, why don't you, you shorten the show? Nigel? I got a hot, hot game of Minecraft going at home. Why don't you shorten the show? I, could, I You know, I, I'm thinking maybe I'll start shortening it by 10 minutes every week so that no one notices that it's eventually uh, an so hour. So this is all water? This is just this is water? Okay. That's kind of like soda. I gotta say, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been here in a while, man. But we've been tightening the format, yeah. And this is, this we've been, is, we've been this is strange. Like, <laughs> this fits in with with everything that's happening. <laughs> you know, like it's like perfectly, exactly what's happening. Just like, it's like this kind of like fantastic collapse. Did we, did, did we have no audience last time you were here? No, we had an audience. We had this beautiful, oh, okay. wonderful audience, and yeah. like, and now it's just this. They just, Empty cavernous space. Yeah. It's like the it's like the end of a. So this like this is something I've been thinking about a lot is the apocalypse uh-huh. and uh, how the apocalypse is not going to be the way people think the apocalypse would. No be. big insects. What's that? Sorry. Keep going. No what sex? No big insects. Insects. No incest in the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> no I think big it's gonna be incest. Filled with. No no massive incest. I think it'll be filled with giant insects. <laughs> like giant bees that fuck their cousins? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most, yeah. Most insects are essentially practicing massive incest, right? I, I, you know, I've never looked into that. I have I no mean, idea. I suppose every species has some built-in ex- exogenous uh, safety valve, like tries to keep itself from, from fucking itself, you know? Yeah, that's pro- yeah, there's probably a safety valve. So, so when you leave for Minecraft, you know, Duncan and I will just, you know, we'll mind the store while you go play your game. Now that sounds like a plan. Yeah, we could we could get a lot of stuff done tonight after he goes. Yep, we'll probably oh, have. Oh, now we'll probably have an audience again soon. I'm, you know, we're gonna be moving to uh, out of here into I, my butthole. I am evicting us so that the great Taiko ITT can make uh, his Starburns feature. I love his trains. Um, I mean, the format is crazy right now. I know. Well, that, that see, that's why I wanted. To, that's why I was doing this. I'm trying to get it out of the system because I know we're gonna be back in front of an audience soon, and then we're not gonna be able to do stuff like. <laughs> Fake cold opens and things, you know. No, th- no like- I mean this is like something in it. This is like a dream. This is like a something I would dream. I would dream I was doing this with no audience or it's something like truly like after the world ends, a few of us have gone mad. There's a few people in an old empty warehouse. And we're like, fuck it, we'll just do a talk. We all show. have beers and we're eating our legs. Yeah, like I mean, I there's something about like like if it was like if you walked outside, you would die. You know, like, there's something about still doing the podcast. Yeah, The be responsibility fun. of, like, look, people are boarded up in their homes. Right. You know, they're eating right. their legs, they're right. growing beards, but they still, this is the only happiness they have. Oh, my God. I Now I know what this reminds me of because I was just watching it. You know, one thing that just infuriated me is I realized you cannot download the original dawn of the dead oh, yeah, from yeah. normal meat you have to get it off of youtube it's low res what? what are you talking about you I, it, uh, as far as i'm aware you can't get it from amazon you can't get it from itunes you can't get it from the normal ways that you would down i mean you could you could torrent it i'm sure but like yeah. you know the the convenience of just downloading it for like three bucks it's for some who knows why so yeah. you know, get probably, it from because well, they want you to get the new one because it's all probably the same it's money going to the same place and so they want 
Well, they just put out a 4K version of uh, Night of the Living Dead, and they're probably doing a new restoration of that. I right. just bought, coincidentally, somebody took like all of the cuts of the original Dawn of the Dead because Dario Argento produced it, and there was like more s different deleted scenes in the Italian version. Someone did a super cut of both of them, and I'm going to get it in the mail this that's cool. weak. So that's I've cool. never seen the Italian version of it. That's yeah. badass. Yeah. It was a different name, wasn't it? Was it it's called, called Zombie or something? I think. Yeah. Yeah. But and that's it, one of my favorite movies, and it starts off and it's sorry, Dan. It starts off no, in a TV studio yep. during the apocalypse, yeah. and they're trying to process it. And it's very similar to this, except yeah. we're like more like low key. They're they're yeah. freaking out. But, but it is like it is like an abandoned. Like news state, like the cameras moving around, people are talking, you know, in the background. It, yeah, it, it does have this kind of, you know, dead, dead has been show feeling. In well, honor of that release, aren't didn't we write a what if we were Dawn of the Dead uh, sketch? Yeah. So I don't know why you guys are spoiling it so much. Okay. I mean, I said we should segue to this topic to yes, tee sorry. up our Dawn of the Dead sketch that we've been spending so much time when on. We had our meeting about the show yesterday. Yeah, when we wrote the burger sketch. Right. <laughs> um, it took a long had a team of 15 writers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's let's start that sketch. This is the Dawn of the Dead sketch. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming for you. <laughs> They're it's coming. It's funnier every time, man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> Last week on Night of the Living Dead, they're coming <laughs> to get you, Barbara. <laughs> they're coming for you. They've been dead a long time, Barbara. Uh, they're coming for you. They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, man, when I was watching my friend get his throat ripped out by a zombie before I ran in here. Yes, Barbara. I thought to myself, I'd never laugh again. Mm -hmm. Like, I would go into shock. I'd go nuts. But that fucking thing, man. Yeah. Every oh. time you yes. keep doing that impression from Night of Living Dead. Yeah. It's yes. fucking funny. When, when did it's you a good one, when did you? How did you first learn how funny that was? Oh, uh, the first time I said it, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and Barbara laughed. Mm -hmm. And then you also laughed, Barbara. Can I be clear on something? You're saying that he's doing it f from the movie Night of the Living Dead. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a, 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 he's a, doing a, the impression, yeah. ironically, because I slipped on intestines on the way in here. So, you did, Barbara. So, <laughs> all right. So I just want to be clear, because that's how, so, sometimes a thing like Night of the Living Dead is a movie that... W w and end that of we the can thing rent. defines the thing, Barbara. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to get you, Barbara. Barbara. But here we are. It, can I? They're coming to get you, Barbara. Can I ask? Have you? Do you? Get I've been it? saying that all night. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Oh it's shit! Shit! Sorry, I gotta. Uh, we're, we're 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 live again. Um, they're so, coming. All right. Um, if you are uh, in the Glenbrook area, uh, Reseda, uh, Riverside. Um, we have a new list of shelters for you. Riverside. Do not go to the uh, to the schools. Do not go to the shelters. Uh, we we mentioned in the previous uh, segment those shelters have been. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Um, again. No, seriously, my mom lives in. Riverside. If you are just tuning They're in, coming guys, to get you, Barbara. guys, we're live. Not this funny. is live. It's not funny. My They're mom. Coming to the dead have been returning They're coming to life to get you, Barbara. and murdering the living. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Um, I left the door open. <laughs> it's okay. That's it. Doesn't. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> laughter gets through. We uh, we laughter gets through this. We have a we have a doctor here, a physiologist in the uh, studio. His doctor. name was Finch Williams. I was, I was my brother. And, and it, they were eating his throat. Oh, I guess he's not. He's uh, he's no longer with us. Okay. Again, why if, isn't somebody doing something? If someone near you has perished, do not leave the body unattended. Do not attempt to bury it, burn it, or cut off the head, or drive a sharp object. Don't do any of that. 
D no, don't. Oh, sorry. Don't don't bury the body. Don't just hang out with it. Don't sit shiva. I think that's what they call it. Well, you could you could try to make it laugh. You could go. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It's if I was gonna anymore. make a zombie laugh, it's I wouldn't. Funny. It's not. My mom's probably dead right now, Stop. and it's my fault. Well, I mean, the question is, like, is she really dead? If she comes back to life, your that's mom's not, immortal now. That's not. Your you know mom's I mean. like immortally retarded. Is that last what thing a I said? Last thing I said to her is, I I hope they fucking get you. It's just your mom's gonna live forever. You should be happy. Oh shit! F you know what? I'm gonna we're gonna take a brief break from the uh, from the broadcast because I left uh, I left my keys in the helicopter on the roof and I'm just gonna run up there, go in the helicopter, grab my there? keys okay. and come go. back down Makes sense. to hang out here with everybody. Um, all these funny people and, uh, okay. and and keep helping cool. people by by by. I'm so glad we have that helicopter Me because too. If, if there was <laughs> ever a reason to have a shit. That's for sure. Did you hear something? Yeah, I heard it. What did you hear? I heard a bird flapping really fast. Yeah, it sounded like a giant hummingbird or helicopter. Hel and scene. Oh, man. I thought we were going to say helicopter together. Yeah. We didn't. Um, yeah. I, took, I mean, it's good. So Dawn of the Dead's wow. pro coming, probably coming out on DVD or something. And uh, yeah, so we threw DVD. that together. DVD, it'll come out. We have some other sketches coming up throughout the show. King Kong lives. Try to get your mind off the Trump thing. You know, we're not doing a lot of current event sketches, but we do, you know, we got to do a couple. Uh, otherwise, we're going to lose listeners to MSNBC. So That's true. We try to keep it. We try to keep it above the belt. We try to keep it. We try to keep it um, above the belt. This is wild, man. Last time I was here, there were people filled laughing. with people yeah. laughing. No bad. Do you know why they stopped? You know why they stopped coming? Yeah, I heard. I heard. I heard. Quality. About, yeah, I heard the quality. Yeah, we actually like we we, we dropped our tickets to a penny. Yeah. Uh, people just aren't they just, coming. They just. What they, happened? It just slid downhill. Huh? Yeah. I just. It what was just, happened? I started showing up regularly. I don't. It was it you? Was it, I remember you spiraled into like some deep dark existentialism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always good. Then you you incurred the wrath of the gods. Mm -hmm. Is what happened. Do you worry about that? That the reason that the fire the fire department came and shut down Harmontown and that the chaos is coming from a, a vortex of that dark. Remember that? I don't know if you're mm -hmm. still in it. That thing you went into. Do you worry um, that it's like law of attraction stuff like? I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the rim. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I I I I believe that stuff like that is related. Like you, you know? know, you get dark enough, and the universe around you starts reflecting that darkness. What yeah. you think about, you bring about. Mm hmm. Yeah, but I yeah I don't see the merit in. Uh, I mean, I'm trying. I, I or I, it's not that I don't see the merit in it. It's just that I. It's just hard to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to disingenuously uh, be happy you no. know i don't want to like force it like no way. like you re you know those people that say it takes less muscles to smile and Fuck you gotta them. think positive stuff it's just like uh, i what i what i like to do is be happy i had i had it out with my therapist uh friday uh let her have it because uh you know like and that's a, it was a pretty pretty interesting session because uh it was, it was pretty you know she made it pretty clear like i do have an i do have i you know i my big thing is shame and uh, the shame doesn't really let me, uh, you know, it, it just sort of dominates everything. Yeah. Like, I'm, I just, that's Heard a lot big of thing is I got to, I got to try to, rep the next five years is going to be about replacing the shame with esteem. You know, the, uh, this thing Terrence McKenna said, I always think about is that, cause you know, the happy idea are supposed to be happy, but that like Terrence McKenna was saying this thing about how he was talking about something called shamanic ecstasy and like ecstatic states are not limited to. Uh, happiness or joy states, but there's ecstatic sadness, ecstatic shame, ecstatic mi misery, and and I really like that because it's not an invitation to like oh just be happy. It's more of an invitation to like fully be what you are right now, as deep as you can be, which is what you do. And even if that thing produces a wave of some kind of 
psychic repulsion that produces dark ripples that make the fire department shut down this beautiful fucking theater yeah. and transforms everything into a reflection of the darkness. <clears throat> Even that's kind of amazing because it's like, holy shit, magic's real. I was looking at it more like, the funny thing is, as much shame as I have, I didn't really think to blame myself for the fire marshal. I was actually thinking the fire marshal was bailing me out, like that that was God like saving me because I, really, I was starting to hate the audience. And hey, I mostly hate myself. I mean, you can't really hate an audience. An audience is always. Are you uh, afraid? Are you afraid you're gonna hate the audience again when they? No, start no, no. Up? It's it's like a rom com. You know, we broke up. We 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 spent all this time apart. Now I got long hair. I'm, Why'd you hate him? I hated. I just hated. I hated what we were all going through together. You know, so it just brought out the worst in all of us. You know, I just speak for myself. It was just just made me. I was just really sad and all this stuff. So it's like I'm not gonna have a good relationship with the audience. I was just like, they're a giant crowd of people that react on certain cues. And like, that was exactly, you know, I wasn't in the mood for that. You like, know like we were all thing. feeling kind of like really frightened about these concepts of like crowd dynamics and stuff. Like how you, you know, like yeah. what, what makes people go, Ooh, or what right. makes people go boo or yay. Or right. it, it just kind of, there was no good news to any of it. It was like, I, I, I would, I would come out on stage and I would, I don't ever think about it that much, but it was just like my micro flow chart would be, if you slowed it down, would be something like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? Ignore how much peril is, I feel how much sadness, how much frustration, how much humiliation, how much shame, how much rage. Do I ignore those things? Uh, and then become like a kind of like I don't know like a Regis Philbin character. Right. Do I do I become like you know uh, Sean King? Do I do I do I become like a, do I become a voice of a generation? That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and not my generation. Like do I, do I actually have to? You know, it's, it's like an experiment with like signal boosting young activists and stuff. Like 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 okay, let's use this platform because. Just doesn't feel right to s sit around and talk about how I don't want to tie my shoes anymore. You know. I was just thinking as you're doing this, like you know, the Jones obviously Jonestown's pretty sad, but you know, it's kind of like there's like at least one little happy part of it, which is that Jim Jones killed himself too. But think how fucked up it would have been if they walked in there and he's still talking and there's all those <laughs> fucking dead bodies just surrounding him, but he's giving a sermon to the dead bodies. Damn, that would have been amazing. He just didn't have the guts. <laughs> you watch this uh, Wild Wild Country? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. Your opinion? I wish they'd, I, I thought it was beautiful. Like yeah. the way they edited it and put it, to, I thought it was beautiful, but I wish they'd focus more on Osho because cause I think that like what I love about a, a good cult documentary is if they put in enough of the cult leader's philosophy that it makes me want to join. Right. Uh, but not to be one of those the people that responds this way to that, but I noticed the same thing but felt that that was the point. Then that was what made it really cool was that they actually just focused entirely on the relationship between the cult and the... And the townspeople to the point where if you were an alien, you wouldn't you wouldn't know what a cult was, and and you you, you spent the whole time going like, well, why aren't they a cult? These hillbillies that right. are like so smug and like have their they keep talking about how they have their own way of doing things yeah. and yeah. And, another, and, and 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 you know and you, I loved I loved how you would like love them and hate them like you know like up and down and up and yeah. all around like and and I think that uh, they just very tastefully inserted like from the rednecks perspective like like toward the beginning like that movie that that comes out that everyone gets to see like their naked naked uh primal scream therapy or whatever and, and but it was like didn't it feel kind of like like the like like if they if they had if they had focused in on on this guy who didn't talk for four years and stuff like, like, like what, and what, what that religion was that then it would invite all of your, it would just put you in the shoes of the redneck or, or the shoes of the convert. Like you're saying, I mean, I, I keep thinking like kind of what you're saying, like, I guess it must've been intentional. Maybe they're showing like, 
the uh, the thing that happens where the gatekeeper becomes the destination, sort of. They're showing like the gross thing that you know, like everyone focuses on the Pope, you know, right. instead of it's like they, everyone focuses on the representative of the thing instead of the thing itself. And maybe they wanted to make a point of doing that without saying that's what they were doing. I mean, it was good in the sense that it, it elicits all of these thoughts and makes yeah. you wonder. But I mean, maybe I'm just looking for a different documentary. But I could easily just do the research and read Osho stuff. Yeah, yeah. and 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 he's he's, he's pretty fun. I mean, Cody was all was a uh, you know a, a a lover of his quotes and stuff because yeah. he would. What he, are some of his quotes? I, I don't know. He's what he's is- he's 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 he was a fun guy because he 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 had that look, but he would he would just talk very liberally about about sex and stuff. Right. But, uh. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, I mean, I found myself too. I was like, wait, how, so, pump the brakes and let me get out and smell the roses here. These people just started quote? carrying that's, uh, that's ocean. assault rifles <laughs> and dressing like the Joker and stuff like that. All these people with their ne- with their ties and their clean cut beards and yeah. like like they 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 this like like what is this cult? But I, I but I I think it was good that it was just like. I felt I felt in the end I was like weeping at the end because I felt like I had been thrust into the position of God by, by both these rednecks and these and these cultists and like everybody had just swirled around in this 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 tidy ball of of, of conflict and chasing each other and that the whole thing was just it, it, I just started crying and I, I thank God for that guy the guy that kind of takes you through the whole thing the lawyer yes. yeah and then he's just like walking with his cane I just yeah. started like bawling my eyes yeah. out I think was, he was just so it, it, it was like he didn't do anything wrong that entire time he was a reliable narrator and he was neither a, a Sheila uh, loyalist nor a you know, uh, trying to abscond with Osho. I mean, he was just like, yeah. he represented that kind of like, like when you read Going Clear, like those Scientologists that are just sort of like, look, I, I'm getting something out of this. Yes. Can we stop with the drama? Um, and, 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 and that he was a sort of life master. He represented the best that that quote unquote cult could accomplish. I think that the reason for its existence was that it made you an effective, happy person that drew people. It still goes on, you know, you didn't, you didn't have to like leave capitalism behind. You didn't have to, you didn't have to have all these extreme conversations about like this world is bullshit. They just fucking built a city in the middle of nowhere. And then, and then I guess what made me start crying was that you could do all that. You could like, you could ride that wave without falling off the surfboard like he did and then it still just ends with you with a gray beard like walking around like you can't surf forever you can't well i mean you gotta it, it does happen but it, it's for that thing to happen it, it's it's takes war i mean historically like if you look at it it's like to to get the big paradigm shift to happen in a serious way you know you know pulled it off the the mormons like they were they they there were there was conflict with them they fought them for a while like yeah. when when a thing like that when a theocracy bubbles up or a new idea bubbles up quite often it seems like the idea it bubbles up inside of tries to tries to kill it yeah if, if, especially if it's a contagious idea they try to the if it's like a threat to the dominant paradigm and it gets big enough the helicopters show up the cops show up. The fire marshal shows up. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a fantastic, like, closing thought at the end of that Going Clear book um, that just, yeah, it's sort of it, without without bothering to categorize Scientology as either a good thing or a bad thing, just talking about the history of, of, of upstart religion in the United States – um and how yeah it's you 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 we want to look at all of these things and go they either they either need to live or die but we coexist with things like mormonism or um uh uh jehovah's witness re whatever you call it in its noun form uh the 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 <laughs> but it's like and like yeah these uh, these 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 little things they're not called cults anymore you could call mormonism a cult if you wanted to yeah but we don't anymore because we, yeah, we went to, like you said, like we, we, we jumped them in. What's well, they, up with the Pope now? The Pope's Pope saying that hell doesn't exist. Excuse me, can I, can you, can I, can I make a bunch of fucking chair sounds now that you're talking? 
The <laughs> fuck were you doing over here? I'm trying to, keep trying to make a goddamn point. You were talking like, for a like while. A fu- you sound I like a like fucking I was Home Depot. Are you making a bookcase? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm trying to relax here. You're you talking know? forever. You're not even turning or including me. You're all in love with Duncan again. You don't even look at what me. What do you mean again? You when did you fall out of love with me? I'm trying to get comfortable. Wait, you fell out of love with me? No. You fell out of love with me? <laughs> Making a bookcase. D- Dan, you noticed those. I didn't notice those chair sounds. Oh, really? I didn't either. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? It's, yeah, yeah. I know what you were doing. Them. You're like on the fucking vowels of my words. Like, yeah, you're just, you're, a, <laughs> you're like vowels. a monkey. You're a naughty monkey. Well, don't invite me anymore and you'll be the happiest person in the world. <sighs> Please, I can't. You please, uh, please do the show. Spencer's not going to be here tonight. Davis is going to be. Would you please, please, every, that, everybody loves you. Come on, please. That conversation please, never happened. He's please, making this up. Please, I didn't know. I walked to the door and I found you, out Spencer wasn't here. Come, Wait, Jeff on, wasn't on. here. Dan, Dan, I'm just going to read the text you sent me. <laughs> no. This is a text from Dan. Please, 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 will you Spencer. please, pretty please, please do the show. Spencer isn't going to be here. Will you please, 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 please. Come on, come on, come on. Please, please, please. everyone loves you. Please, please. Come on. You guys, look, it's MC Gun Control. What's this? Yo. <laughs> Yo, it's me, MC Gun Control. I'm a repeat character. Well, now you are. This is the second time you showed up. Give me a beat. I'm going to rap about gun control. Yeah. Gun control. MC. Gun control. Guns. Awareness of guns. Gun control. Awareness. A lot of lethal weapons in the world. The AR-15 can kill... 30 people per second. It's a very, very expensive military grade weapon. I'm MC Gun Control. All right, okay, got it. So, anyway, what the Pope says that hell doesn't exist? I, I, I think he, I, it's weird because, like, the Pope said hell doesn't exist, and then. So, I heard right. Didn't he? No, I, but it was like mis, It was like a misquote or something. I thought it was like... <laughs> he's, he was why, like he's walking drunk. it back. He, he like tried that. to walk it back. You know, he, I, I don't know, though, because it, you know, it's one of those things, that's like a thing that pops up on the Drudge Report. Ooh. That's the thing that gets hits. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if he... I think it was either a misquote or he, like it, it was taken out of context or something. But well, yeah, but, but the thing is, the, like, the, eventually, eventually they will say that, right? Because... The Drudge Report? No, because for won't even look for won't hundreds even of look at me for hundreds of years, they they were like holding the line on like whether the sun went around the Earth or not. Well, I, I think the the important question for us all to ask is, does hell exist? Okay, let's break it down. Okay, all right. So, um, no. How do you know? I uh, I guess I don't. I mean, it gets into. I don't have any proof. How I mean, that? It, well, I mean, like it's like their, I mean, their version of hell might not exist, but one of the creepy things about black holes, you know, we don't know what the fuck's going on in there. Yeah, and like that, those things are sucking in galaxies. Yeah, and those galaxies, what when you're, if there is a soul, yeah, does your soul leave the galaxy or does it float around the galaxy or does it go to multiple galaxies? Could a soul get sucked into a black hole? My point is, like, is there some point of like maximum soul compression? Where you would be sentient, but eternally in some infinite blackness. I think it's. I think as because your soul doesn't have a uh, mass, it doesn't. It's not accountable to the laws of uh, uh, speed of light and time. So your soul, if there is such a thing, if you can, if your consciousness is a field that exists independently of your yeah your organ that kind of is representing it corporally. Then upon death, it's possible that your soul will experience infinity uh, because time stops. It stops being in time. And then it's possible that that's not like a fun thing for a soul, that that's like being locked in a box because that's why the universe started is because God 
which was all of us and everything, was like locked in nothingness yes. and no time and was like, I got to get out of here, which yep. is what you do when you're a kid and your brother puts you in a cupboard. Like you experience the same panic, whereas a rabbit would just hang out. It would just go, oh, I guess I'm locked in a cabinet, but sentience makes you claustrophobic because you go, I can't just be, be nothing, and yeah. you freak the fuck out, and then uh, and you start thinking about what, everything, and then and then you're like, get me out of here, and you throw a tantrum, and that's the your, your piece of the Big Bang, which means that possibly when you die, hell may be the only thing that happens, which is simply you returning to the state of the universe before it existed, and, and but with that one little thing of you you want to be, but you can't. Osho, that's directly quoted from Osho. Really? The, that, that's, that, that's, see, that's part of it. And then the other part of it is hell certainly exists on planet Earth. I mean, people become their own black holes, and they get so compressed into themselves that every breath is a, is a, is a living hell. So, so you end up in a, so that happens too. So when the Pope says hell doesn't exist, it's like one of, it's like a time when I think I kind of disagreed with the Pope. I mean, maybe if he meant it, it's like, well, you must mean like the fire pit thing, probably. But certainly like what you would, people suffer so deeply on this planet. Right. It'd be cool if he announced, he said, sorry, I meant hell doesn't exist underneath the earth when you die. I meant hell exists on earth and i know where it is and we have to go fight them and then he like <laughs> let us that would be amazing and the and the and the fucking lord of the rings score started oh, and we're what just a like great war that'd be so that cool would be so wouldn't it be great. cool to be that, part of just a, be a good war a war on hell do you Why not know? happy we be airstrikes against hell Why it would be cool right up that? until the fighting part like it would be fun just walking there right like you were walking part of a big line because the worst case scenario is you'd get tired and be left behind big deal <laughs> you'd be like whoops guess i won't make that war we're headed to but in the meantime you'd feel like a you know, I always wanted to be like a migrant bird. Like you're just like you'd have that togetherness. You'd be part yeah. of a big caravan. Hey, where are you guys going? We're walking to hell, and we're gonna fight all the, the boogans. Devil. And uh, and then and then and then you just walk and you got your knapsack and your marshmallows yeah. and your you sword. You wanted to be a a migrant bird, <laughs> <laughs> like dare to dream, man. I wanted to be a firefighter, <laughs> a migrant bird. <laughs> Well, it's well, cool. Danny, what are you going to be when you grow up? Oh, I would like to be a migrant bird. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, not a migrating bird, but like a... a the, the oh, not, yeah, like, a, like an illegal... <laughs> yeah, like a migrant bird. Yeah. <laughs> a bird that's like doesn't have its visa. A bird, a bird that they make uh, yeah. pick up other birds' eggs uh, because it, it, uh, the economy of its uh, own bird country is fucked up. Can you imagine if Trump went that nuts that he started trying to keep Mexican birds out of the United <laughs> States? <laughs> That'd be incredible. We got, but yeah, I mean, like that's that's a. I always, you know, when this we we bomb people and it's all so confusing and, and ultimately sad. You just think like, man, it would be so nice if if we had something something real to fight. Like we've got all these great weapons and and nothing's black black or white and it's always so confusing. But how glorious would it be, man? Just if Trump came out and he's like, "We have found the gateway to hell." Yeah. Here's the videotape of it. Look and here. And him peeing on a prostitute's mattress. <laughs> That's. A- <laughs> he says, you That's get, why the he, tape. The thing is all screwed up. You didn't get the facts right. He's like, "There's no P tape," but for the longest time, and then he's like, "Look, do you, did you ever think?" Finally, they got the P tape, and he's like, "Listen, don't. I'm telling you. Don't while I it. was making those hookers pee, a gate to hell opened. It was part of a ritual. That's why I didn't want you to yeah. see it. I'm proud of making people pee on the Obama's bed. As most of you suspected, <laughs> that's not a deal breaker for me. I'm a Nazi and a rapist. I don't care what you think of me. I do." care if hell overtakes the earth and on that p tape is the gateway to hell yeah. and and then and then rachel maddow's <laughs> like nice try clown and then she presses play and then it's like Whoa. but it's like fun because it's like yeah there's like there's like bad guys that are just like made of shit and they got horns and yeah you know and they're like Argh. and then and then like you could you could fight them like with your friends 
you could fight them <laughs> as part of the army. Like, hey, like what are you doing, man? <laughs> These shit do- people are down the street. Yeah. Come over. Let- they they have like, horns. You, you could choose if you wanted to be like a guerrilla fighter, like street to street, or just like hang out with your friends and like 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 because it's like it's just it's just reality versus hell. So it's like not yeah. There's an army version, but and that's it's all it's for people who who enjoy that kind of thing. Well, that's that's one of the satanic aspects of war, isn't it? Is that it's like it takes exactly what people want to do, which is to build stuff together and like and blow things up and set things on fire and have fun together and like yeah. and, and survive together. And then it takes that thing and, and transforms it into a, like a, a, a bond. Like nothing is more bonding than being like yeah. going out into a stressful situation with your pals. People want to have a mission. They like going yeah. camping. They, yeah. they like building things. I yeah. don't. You don't like camping? Ask me again. Do you like camping? No. You went on a bad camping trip. What? You just went on a few bad camping trips. All of them. I don't. Why would I? How many camping trips have you gone on? I don't remember because I tried to block them out. Come on, you can remember. That's ridiculous. How many camping trips? You can't. You got to think back. Like you with it under ten or over ten. Under ten. See, you went on some bad trips. Yeah, and they were all with your parents, and you were ten, and you were. All right. Let's go on a camping trip. That would be fun. That's the next version of Harmon Town. Deep in the fucking ju- the forest. Just or jun- Dan and me. Hunting. No hunting. I don't hunt. The irony should be we should we should dress the set for uh, as like a camping site like in a sitcom and then we hit, try to have like a campfire and then the ultimate irony is because the fire marshal <laughs> shut us down, the whole fucking <laughs> stage goes up in flames. <laughs> Do you think that there would be at least a couple of like happy firemen? Like they would, they, like there would be like a sense of like I told you. Yeah. As they're dragging your charred corpse out, they're like, we tried to save you. Yeah, but they tried. I mean, they saved us from the audience. I mean, the audience didn't start us on fire. I mean, really, if like you knew that you were in a simulator, you're gonna live forever. You get to repeat everything. Wouldn't in one of those versions, the last Harmontown, be you self-immolating? I don't know. I, mean, I think it would have to be at least one. Oh God! I mean, at that least. would just be incredible. That I'd, would that could save the world. Dude. I'd have to, that, I'd that have to be. Fix a I'd lot have to have problems. massive guarantees about uh, you know that not being the end, and also like like ouch. Regardless. Well, I mean, there's morphine. There's ways we could prop your body up, make it seem like you're awake. True. Use some kind of scares crow. You got you run a studio, man. There's got to be a way to like get the yeah. props to hold you up. Get Tycho and- to animate that. Get Tycho to animate that. You get you animate the flames on you with Tycho. He can do it. Him and Bubbles, and Ty- Tycho's animating Bubbles. He can animate you em- <laughs> emulating yourself. <laughs> or, or, or I don't know, man. I mean, I'm. I'm not suggesting self-immolation, but like if you think in terms of like badass ends of podcasts or series, that would just, be really smart. That'll spread all around the world. Yeah, you know it'd be cool. Is that in the comment section underneath the uh, YouTube video, uh, <laughs> you'd be five comments in before uh, someone uh, uh, commented. Uh, hmm, looks like we need to legislate fire control. <laughs> <laughs> And then the whole thing would just turn into people arguing about guns. <laughs> Under my fucking burn, burning death yes. on YouTube. Like, yes. immediately, just like every YouTube video, I was just like, oh, it's a girl that balanced a spoon on her nose. And then five, five comments down, somebody goes like, hmm, maybe that spoon should uh, be given to Syria. And then, yes. like, like, and then everyone just like, 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 what are comment sections for? Anyways. No, that, that's, the, that's one of the things people are worried about with AI. Is it just going to like eternally destroy? They're going to get rid of the comment sections. They're just gonna do, they're, it's going to embed itself into all comment sections. And, it's and we're not, not going to do- be able to comment on the section. It'll just always just be like some kind of chaos running through that dialogue forever. Well, I don't know, man. It's really, really interesting. I like it. I like the experiment you're doing. It's pretty cool. It's That's, pretty cool. Yeah, we tried different stuff. We tried to do it like Howard Stern style in the in the VO booth. And I was like, eh, you know, I could do any podcast like that. And I was like, all right, well, let's go back on the stage. We'll just have nobody there. Eh, it's got its ups and downs. Well, it's like, it's like I guess one thing, I don't know that anyone... I'm just trying to think of a late night show or a show in this format 
with no audience where it's just this where and I'd have to go back to the Alan Havy show uh late night yeah. basic cable that, that's what uh, it was yeah the, uh, Nick Bakai as his uh Andy Richter and it was kind of like quiet and wasn't there an audience of one or something like yeah that? I think there was like uh I mean you, you you can always like hear a couple people chuckling here and there it reminds but, me of like local TV or Joe Bob Briggs like monster vision where it just it was obvious it was just one guy in a studio like this with maybe three people yeah laughing behind the camera yeah so a guy tweeted at me and he was like uh and it's like several tweets chained together and he's like I uh, I know you th- I know you think it's uh, easier to I, don't, I can't remember what his presuppositions were, but he was like, like I urge you to listen to the early episodes. Uh, I think you'll find that they're better. Like he was like really like breaking it to me that the podcast is worse when there's no fucking audience. <laughs> so it's like like re- responding to him going like, I, what is your point? Like what do you think is it? stake here i don't understand well i don't i think he's probably saying like it's not that the podcast is worse it's like if you do a format that's generally made for an audience Mm -hmm. minus the audience it produces and then you add to it no i think no this guy was i can guarantee you this guy was basically he was like he wanted the audience back and thought that even though he said he'd just finished listening to all of the episodes so i don't know how you get through that without the information that this isn't really a choice like so right to like weigh in and go i don't know it's kind of like you're out in the middle of nowhere and like your your truck has is, is got one tire in the ditch and people are like trying to get a piece of wood under the tire but then some other people are like well maybe if we sing and dance like who's who who says who says this wasn't our destination and uh, like as long as the truck's not working and all this stuff it's just to have have one guy there going like uh you know um I think if you really think about it, pound for pound, what we're going through right now is actually worse than um, than what 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 was happening right. yesterday. I was like, "Thanks, Miles." No shit, right? <laughs> no shit, man. His name was Miles. I, he it, it was to me. That's a great name for somebody commenting on a truck that yeah. stopped. Miles to go. <laughs> Miles Togo. Miles to go. So Togo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we will soon be back in front of an audience. But then the you know, be careful what you wish for because I think that you know, there's going to come a point you know, that that's that's going to be like a return threshold and then you know, those are that's how stories end. We just go, okay, we did it. We did this, then we did that, and then we did this. And then we did it like this. Yay. And it's going to be like 45. Like what? What do oh we? What do we? What do we? What do we? You're 45. Yeah, I'm saying like there, there may come a day when, when the appropriate thing for me to do for my own uh, happiness and to and to evolve is actually has not only nothing to do with a public life, right. but also, in fact, maybe actually be counter to a public life. You know what I mean? Like, do you think you're resisting something? Do you feel resistant? Uh, in what? What? Uh, can, can you get more specific? Just like you know, like when you're in a situation, and you and you realize you don't want to be in that situation. It could be in you know in general. Like, do you, do you think you're you you find yourself feeling like resisting what's happening more more often than not? I I, I find myself trying to trying to. F- find my bliss in situations that by definition and that's a very appropriate phrase by definition because everything by definition <laughs> like kind of excludes it's it starts to run counter to bliss following so so like let's say so you do something fun and then you say let's do something fun every week yeah and then you can you, you got to strike that balance you just do Everybody does like like, OK, we're going to have a book club. We're going to get together every Wednesday. And, you know, you, a, a big boy understands that sometimes if you're getting together every single Wednesday for your book club. Yeah, there's going to be some Wednesdays when you're not the one who's so stoked about showing up on Wednesday. Yeah, you're kind of an asshole if you show up, therefore, on Wednesday with this like kill the book club vibe. Right. When every, because for all you know, everybody else on that particular Wednesday is like 
kind of in a good mood and like yeah. like like actually the book club is there to carry them you know yeah. and uh it's it, these this is this the, it's the nature of things you start you schedule them you make them regular you decide to do them you 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 and and there's always going to be this like struggle to balance the uh let's let's always do this with oh and by the way let's always do whatever the fuck we feel like doing I mean, I, that that thing that you are, are doing with this thing has always blown me away because it is the regularity of it, the complexity of it, the the getting getting here even now doing it like this is it's insane. Like when I do my podcast, I go into my studio, I get high, I've got synthesizers, and I just putter around in there until something like happens that I like, and it's pri it's very private. Like they were telling me that you were you felt good that you were able to do this minus an audience and i was thinking like holy shit man i mean like doing it with an audience is madness it's, mm -hmm. it's madness it's such a when i go on tour with my podcast that's like a it's heavy for me like that's a it's a huge it feels like big and, and like any kind of time i do a live show it feels like really just very intense and less like what it is when i record it which is just a day of just allowing whatever happens Apt to happen so it's i don't i mean i can understand you feeling starting to really feel weird about what you've been doing it makes sense to me i hope i don't seem like i'm judging the way that you're feeling because i get it man it's just i get it i think it's it's just very hyper pressurized what you've been doing a weekly live show in front of a really smart audience some of whom are really fucking mean and the cha the challenge is to yeah, is to it's a high pressure thing to decide that you're going to do something every week, and then the and then the fun worthwhile pressure is, uh, or the fun worthwhile uh, activity is. It was one squeak. I moved. I can't move. I now. think that was an accident. It was. Is, it was. It was. Is, I moved. My foot was falling asleep. And I put it on the floor. The fun worthwhile he, activity is trying to figure out how to take something that you've you've determined. You guys looked at me like I spit in his drink. And then also, like like continue to be like, okay, well then, and on top of that, then how is it always different and challenging and fun or whatever whatever that word is, chaotic or something, you know? Like it it I've I've I think that I think that a nice death that's occurred with this venue is the death of my idea that it was going to ever grow into a um into any into something that had more structure you know i thought like maybe that would grow like it's like you put up a trellis and then like a crazy chaotic thing that just grows by yeah. nature uses the trellis so the combination of the of the out of the moment like backbreaking carpentry plus the it's okay that thing everything's just going to grow all over this that's that's my fantasy of doing things you know that aren't for money like, you go like oh wow it's cool that we grew that thing into this thing it's like yeah. ch channel 101 like grew into this thing and like it wasn't it, it, it was neither based on us not giving a shit nor was it based on us giving too much of a shit it was just sort of like just grew well, this thing's still growing, just not growing the way you thought it would. Yeah, exactly. I think that's an important part of its growth. Is the you know there was a part of Point Channel One Hundred One's history when Shrab and I were like, are we going to keep being the ones with our thumb on the switch? Because the the thing started this idea that the audience is always in charge, and then we kind of tweaked the system to allow for us to not even be involved, and that was an important thing. Like the the likewise this this the growth of this show. I think this is an interesting chapter because it's like. I was like, let's move it to Starburns, and then let's, like, for the subscribers, we could have, like, video segments, and we could edit, you know, I, was just, I just had, like, these ambitions, but I never made the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm going to work really hard on the show, right. but I always thought, I made the mistake of thinking, oh, we'll move in, and we'll set up a foundation, and then shit will grow on top of that, like, everyone will keep wanting to add to it, and it'll, like, grow <coughs> into this thing, and, and then the fucking election happened. And then I, and then it just like every, nobody, 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 it's just like we all across the entire country, we, like the, the music changed for everybody. It, it, it didn't matter what dance move you were about to do. Um, 
and and what plans you had with other people. It just like all of it, you know, it was just like fucking everything shifted. And then and then the smart creative people are like, okay, how do we adapt to this? But there's no question that it was just like <laughs> like it kind of just disrupted everything. You feel like this is related to the election? Yes. This is connected to the political climate of the United States. I don't know if it's connected to the political climate, but it's definitely connected to the event of of like the election and its like social repercussions and things. Yes. I like you know, so like on Friday night I had a, a little a little party and I was like, fuck man. Like this is how selfish I am. I'm like, fuck. God damn it, World War III is going to start on the night of this party that I'm throwing. And I was like bummed because it's like everyone's going to come and then there's going to be nuclear war or something and it's going to like fuck up the, the party. And I was like, I was like, God damn, that's such a selfish thought. But then I realized like, whoa, man, like you're, I started getting anxious, you know, beyond that. You know, I started getting scared and worried and nervous about World War III and then and dying. And then I kind of realized, like, oh, I have no control over that. Like, there's nothing I could do. There's no phone calls to be made. There's nothing to be done about this. These are massive, massive gears that are turning. And that, you know, I don't know much of what can really be done about it right now, like in this single moment. Do you think that's uh, naive or like a form of nihilism or to just suddenly just realize, like, oh, actually... I don't really care about the president or political climates or empires or governors or principalities or powers. I'm just using my mind is becoming attached to that because there's a bigger problem I'm trying to avoid. Mm, no, I don't I don't think there's anything weird or wrong with that. I think isn't that pretty much how you felt the entire time and isn't everybody just catching up with you? No, I don't know. I don't. I, I go yeah, back and forth. No, everyone's just exhausted and, and tired of caring. Yeah, you never really did care. It, you knew it was dumb before everybody else. Like it, it was. It, we, we some of us tried, and it, we like herniated our fucking embarrassingly putty like muscles of, of of like and and revealed that we were hypocrites. And yeah, everyone is uh, tired now. And 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 it. Yeah, no. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that mode of thinking. I'm. I, I didn't even know that we were about to be in World War III. The the student has become the master in that regard. I I, I was Minecrafting, like where there is no war, and there is no president, and you know I'm waiting, waiting to, you know, waiting to uh, cash in and and head for the hills. Man, this is. Great, man. I'm reading this book right now. This is perfect. It's it's this new book by the Zen Roshi, Roshi Joan Halifax. I think it's called Standing on the Edge. It's really good, but it's about edge states. And it talks about, like, you know, altruism. Healthy altruism and unhealthy altruism. And how, like, a person who's, like, got a really good heart and who really wants things to be better, really wants things to be better in the world, can, like, fall over the edge into absolute despair and absolute just just broken heartedness and like she she gives all these examples she's amazing she like you know while I'm like planning parties and like ha like having a really fun life uh she's like does she, she like flies to you know there's just that big earthquake that happened recently I think it was in Nepal right where's that big earthquake where was that there's like a massive it wasn't recent recently but the point is she like flies to places where people are suffering and sets up camps and gets blankets flown in and like just tries to help and she doesn't do it in a real flashy showy way I've, I've met her she's just this is just what she does she's like oh well, this here we are on planet earth here's what you do and so she encounters people who do who are doing those things with her and she watches some people get just fucking shattered on their altruism just get broken apart in their compassion how just, do they get broken apart because 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 what happens is is like you you become bitter you go you go out there to help you have an expectation that you're going to make things better you come into contact with a, a really a reality 
which is that, oh, really, you're, you're not going to make everything better. Right. In fact, things might be getting worse while you're trying to make things better. Right. But in your mind, you were like, oh, no, I'm going to do it, or it could be done, or it might be. And, and so, but suddenly you're like, you're watching people bring their children to like triage centers where it's like, no, that, 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 that kid's going to die. And you're watching that happen day after day after day after day. It's, it's kind of what you do with animals, Rob. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you, 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 like, if, you, if you don't watch what you're doing and you fall on, on the other side, what ends up happening is the darkness consumes you. You know, it's that classic thing. You, you, the thing you're fighting, you become. And you don't even realize it's happened to you. And then suddenly you're all broken apart by it. And then the fucking thing won. Then it won. It, you know, that's the crazy thing about it is the, so the way the darkness wins is, is not by killing people who are fighting it. It wins by getting into their hearts. And then, and then you know what I mean? Like Sith style. Sorry to use a star. It's like that. It, like, it just like gets you. And you don't even know it got you. It's a cool book. It's really good. I really love it. What's it called? I think it's called Standing on the Edge. Do you mind if I Google it real quick? I'll tell you. It's like it's about edge yeah, states. Yeah, Dan and I will talk while you do that. Hey, Thank Dan, you. How'd you, what would you do today? You did some Minecraft. That must have been fun. Yeah, I just finished... Uh, Level three. <laughs> no. Are there levels in Minecraft? Well, Minecraft? if you don't know, why would you cut me off and <laughs> you ask me I'm about Minecraft? To, I'm, being, trying to, I'm trying to reach <laughs> out and make a connection. All right. I don't have to. I'm well, trying to make an emotional bid. Okay, well, can I answer it? Can I tell you about Minecraft a little bit? Yes. Mm. Yeah, there's that fire behind your eyes. You don't want to hear about Minecraft. It, I got no internet in here. It's a, just Google the new book by Joan, Joan. I just finished gathering all of the necessary ingredients for a tier one void resource, uh, void ore miner uh, from the environmental tech pack in Minecraft. That's badass. Yeah, it took a great deal of diamonds and other materials that were hard to come by. I went to Monster Palooza this afternoon with Kumail and Jonah, and we looked at Monster Paloozas. You mean masks? Yes. Masks and bootleg DVDs. My therapist told me the name of some guy that, like, I don't know. I said because I, I said like, "Oh, can you, uh, you know, how you taught me to deal with like relationships, like by explaining rules and stuff. Is there rules for how to be interested in people? Because it seems like that's become the what we're really talking about for me is like, well, the when I talk about the election, I don't mean oh everything changed because of who became president. I mean." It, I mean, we all, like, our whole mission statement changed, and, and my, therefore, me as a parasite, as a person who's, like, just, just always wanted to fit in or make people like me or not get beat yeah. up or just be funny or whatever, it's like, that scrambled my signal. So, like, the, that's a good thing because then it, then you, you, you finally get to a place where you're like, okay, so let's just care about Dan. What do, you, what do you want? Right. And then you go, okay, well, I'm going to lock that down, that down, okay. Um, and then what's left is sort of like other people. Like, what am I supposed to, how am I supposed to interact with them? And it's like, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm, you know, and the, the therapist gave me some materials or something to, to look at, but I, I kind of like, it's just like a sink full of dishes. Like, I don't want to learn how to, how to, how to interact with people. She's like trying to show you. I, I don't understand. I'm not. I don't know either because it's like I haven't unpacked it. You know, it's like it's like like a, like oh, look up this guy, read his book, watch his TED talk. You know, like go. You'll you'll enter this realm of like this guy is like a guy who, like, the area, the thing that you're talking about. This guy would be helpful. You know. Right. But I don't. I don't. I just wrote it down and I'm like. I don't, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. All that stuff is like when I go to these Ram Dass retreats, they always talk about mind versus heart, like being up in your head versus in your heart. And all that stuff's so heady. It's all mental. It's all like you're up in your head. It's like those books will get you up in your head. Now that's bad. Books are great. But like some of those, it's like as opposed to just like, oh, uh, well, I love it because it's so simple. 
because it's like just what you're in right now it's perfect it's fine even if the thing you're in right now is just this simmering cauldron of, of whatever it is it's that idea of like yeah that's where we're at right now I'm that thing and then feel that yeah. without any expectation like oh I'm gonna change it that's this thing that um what's her name Pima Chodron the, another Buddhist teacher she says people say oh we're gonna start meditating because we want to be a better person and she says that's an aggression against the you that you are right now the idea is not to meditate to become a better person. The idea is to meditate so that you could fe be yourself more fully, feel yourself more f fully. I love that idea. It's just so fun to just play around with the idea that where you're at right now, this, this where you're at, this where you're at, fucking, it's perfect. Yeah, I find myself last couple, like, like I, I've gone to some dark places and been really upset. It was connected to my dog getting sick and stuff. Are these things like cue, like, operas in your head you yes. know like pockets of magma and things like okay now i have an excuse to flush that vein of lava uh so i don't know what's going on down there but i know on top it's like the reality not the illusion is numbness and stillness yeah. and so then i have these conversations with people like my therapist or or just anybody who's like actually interested goes like well what where are you really at and then i found myself going uh, well i guess you know, come see, come saw, like, like, and then the, 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 like, oh, t what do you mean? Don't you think this and that? It's like the, the other person, like, wants so much more than stillness and numbness, and they can have it, but then that's, that's, that's fracking. Like, it's like, like okay, where well, you're going to pierce me and you're going to dig down, and it's not necessarily more true what's boiling down beneath in the core of the earth like that's no yeah. more the earth than the crust and the polar ice caps and all this stuff like i i just feel on my surface right now like i just like numb yeah Still. just so numb yeah it, like I, I just like, reduced to like i, I but the, and the then it's nice what i noticed in my behavior is like well you haven't gotten on twitter in like three days and you didn't even do it by saying you were going to quit Twitter for three days. Like you forgot to get on Twitter because you're fucking numb. And with numbness comes also, you don't need to self abuse. What is the, so how would you, like if you had to, instead of just saying numbness, like how would you describe the numbness? What, what is it? How would you describe it if you couldn't use the word numb? Stasis? I don't know. I mean, is it like, it's, it's like, it's like, is it, if, if it were, a, it, is it solid? Is it like malleable? Is it, is it, is it changing? Does it come and go? Would it have a color associated with it? Is it opaque? Like, how would you just, what is it? I think, I feel like it's like, I don't know if I controlled it or someone else did, but I feel like it's like, uh, going around the house It's and, and like shutting off, like, like like it's or, or it's it's like 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 there's like white noise that you get used to. And you're just like, oh, I'm on a submarine, so like I just hear all the time background noise sounds like this, because that's what it takes to run a submarine. And then like it's just silent running. Like you just like oh, one by one, you're just turning off equipment. And I don't know if I did that or if that's like a Russian weapon that, or you know what I mean. Like I'm not going to claim credit for it. It's just a it's just a thing that has happened. That's you, the you state. Feel, you mean you feel like it's like a shutting down? Yeah, like it's like a, an energy that's sort of like there was some energy, and then that energy is now turning itself off. Yeah, like 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 like, but but for a purpose. Like waiting. It's about time. It's about like we were being counterproductive with the worrying and the and the pinging and the periscoping yeah. and the, all these things so like okay go deep and shut everything off and just sh you know like and it, and it because it, not because nothing is important because everything is important because we're hunting the red october i don't know like 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 it's it's t it's it's the time for for nothing right now it's it doesn't feel purposeless Right. I feel I, I, if I thought that this was my new life, I'd 
put a bullet in my head because <laughs> I'd be like, well, that's boring. But I, I feel anticipation. I feel like, like okay, this chapter is wrapping up. Like everything, all of my energy creatively is being put into like tying knots on things, going like, okay, let me just get this off my plate. Not don't okay. Say no to that pitch. Don't, don't do that. Don't start that. Don't promise that. And then like let everything like like come down to a to a to a to a point of complete silence and yeah. then so that the orchestra can start and the metaphor mixer can can mix the metaphor of the submarine and the orchestra monster palooza who gives a fuck about that stupid ass fucking Kumail John room great me well what did you buy any masks I didn't, but I bought a bunch of DVDs that I'm going to watch when I get home. I bought a Zachary album, Monster album, Zachary Monster album. I'm going to listen to that on my turntable. And I bought some DVDs. Uh, I'm mad because I got that, that breathalyzer. Uh, keychain and I was like really excited about it but you have to wait 15 minutes to get an accurate reading which makes no sense that sucks so yeah. bad <laughs> you have to wait you have to breathe on it and here's the, the, here's the directions minutes. for the breathalyzer stop drinking wait 20 minutes blow into the thing and then you'll know how drunk you are I, motherfucker if i had the presence of mind i i got the thing because it was 60 bucks and i thought oh this might be a cool way to like create no, awareness you know i just like start putting a number if i'm you know if i am an asshole if i'm angry if i you know like start start putting like road flares oh, that's on. cool no man, and that's then go really like, oh cool. shit! The last time I blew a point yeah. eight, I, uh, you know, how I, is point eight? By the way, he he doesn't call me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb, dude. That's cool. That's like there's this. Thanks, thing. man. I just pulled that out of my ass right now. But I do mean, you think the co- <laughs> do you think the ones the cops use like, like 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 do you think if you get pulled over by the cops and they and they go like, are you do you want to blow into this thing like? Are you actually supposed to say, "Well, you want to give me twenty minutes because I just or finished drinking"? Or take me to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> like it's counterintuitive, but it, but it, but maybe their dirty little secret is that they're like they ask you, "Are you willing to blow a breathalyzer?" And because your instinct as a drunk driver is to say, uh, or are they, or they go, or, or they maybe they, I've never been pulled over for, like and, and checked like that, but maybe maybe they say, uh, uh, "When's the last last time you had a drink?" And, unle- and and if you say, I just had one like five minutes ago before I got in my car, the irony is you're allowed to wait 15 more minutes, but no one wants to say that because it sounds like a confession of drunk driving. Wait, you have to wait 15 minutes before you blow into it? Yeah. But I don't, I'm, I'm hoping that that's a, that's a function of the cheap, shitty keychain thing that I got. I, I, I heard... It makes sense, though. It's in your I, stomach. Isn't there, like, they give you a choice... You can blow in the breathalyzer here, or you can go down to the station and blow into the breathalyzer there. Don't you? Don't they give you a choice? I heard that, and yeah. then they say, you know, go down to the station because by the time you get to the station, you'll probably sober up enough to not be drunk. And driving. or if it if it if it if their equipment works the same way as this piece of shit I got from Amazon, um, uh, sober or not your result if you just like you know within 20 minutes like is is just off the fucking charts it's not accurate it's not accurate unless you wait but but i'm thinking come on it's got to be just because the ch- the cheap ones i don't know get a get a get a get a get a get a 70 get a fancy one. one get a fancy one get a that seems like good money after bad and why don't you get a get a fancy one get one with your name on it <laughs> a designer breathalyzer. Yeah, 
a just, Versace just, breathalyzer? Just do it. Just just do it. Just let it all hang out. What's another $10? <laughs> That's awesome. Just do it. It would be amazing if you they should. had technology. Wouldn't it be great if they had technology that was so, like, like the, the constant, like, if you could digitally know immediately how drunk you were, like, if it was as simple as GPS, like, you don't have to put any effort into it, and then you could just choose to set your Twitter or your, your phone in yes. general, your text messages, you just be like, you, you you choose your settings like when you're sober, but like you go like, look, you are Andy Dick right now, right. Like, like 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 are you and 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 you're about to text your so and so, like you could oh, you could create so lists of people, or if they could hook it up, if your Apple Watch could connect to your iPhoto library, so that underneath each photo it showed your blood alcohol level, yeah, that'd be incredible. Like, you could you could set your email settings to be like, hey, like when you were sober you 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 made me promise that when you clicked send on an email i would go okay i sent it and then wait six hours and then review with you you know like yeah. and then you'd be like god damn it i don't know you'd what's be- the worst drunk email you ever sent oh god i don't know i mean i i i've i've i i stopped using email so long ago like what do you think's the worst drunk tweet you ever did I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, the drunkest, most out-of-control stuff, I yeah. think, was just, like, there was an article about it. It was, like, some, some, some I, like, yelled at some kid for, for three hours or something. You're a sober guy, Rob, huh? No, I, I fucking, I fucking drank. You I ever f- blast out any drunk tweets? <laughs> yeah, but nothing angry, just something stupid. I'm trying to think of what's the dumbest thing I've ever tweeted. It's hard to categorize it. Probably be easier to isolate. I got really the... drunk at a party once, and I said, "Oh, I'm gonna go fuck those black girls or something like that." <laughs> I think that's probably. I think I and I think I screamed that to you from across the 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 party. Well, no, I you, think that's probably the worst thing i've ever done you 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 muttered it through gritted teeth to me and jeff oh god that was a bad that was the worst you were lonely i was ugly lonely (laughs) i was just like i didn't i did not like that time in my life that was a really really dark time well i think we've all been there ugly lonely Oh, ugly, yeah. ugly, lonely, lonely, and drunk. Yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, the only, the only, the, the only thing that makes you graceful, lonely, is uh, time, which is really just saying your taste buds go dead. You know, like it's there's no there's no hero or villain in that process. It's like, from my experience, you're if you don't know loneliness enough yet, you overreact to it and act like a big fucking tool that is going to embarrass you later when you become mature, which becoming mature does not involve you going to a crossroads and learning the blues uh, because you really wanted to evolve yourself. Becoming mature, you the, the, the laziest, least mature people become mature because they get old and tired and they start experiencing the same fucking shit over and over again because they don't make any eff- effort to change. So they're lonely a million times. And then they're like, this isn't so bad. It's kind of like the last time and I know it'll end again. And that's not wisdom and it shouldn't be re- uh, i hate that we when we get old like high road young people when really it's just like yeah yeah like every spider-man 4 is the third movie you've ever seen uh, like, like like why are we arguing I, I i've seen 700 more movies than you i don't remember the last 30 because my brain is dying I, I, I like I, I, it's, it's just like we, we don't do anything heroic to transform. We don't like gain. We don't level up because we're good people. We just like we just keep living and tasting shit and we get bored with it. Well, that, that's the one, one thing I love about Buddhism is the concept of fundamental dissatisfaction, which is the idea that, oh, no, you're that is actually to be human. So it's it's, it's so the, the, the I think the big lie is that comes from all the fucking Spider-Man movies and all the movies and lots of stuff, is we tell these people, no, 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 it gets better. That'll go away. That gnawing, empty thing inside of you, that'll go away. And in Buddhism, it's like, no. That's like a fish saying, one day I'm going to be dry. 
Well, when you're dry, you're dead, fish. And in the same way for a human to think that that thing goes away is one of the great ways a human tortures itself. Is yeah, also the, the the idea of looking forward to it, like that's a good thing. It's That would be like saying uh, the best example I can think of is imagine if these like Parkland kids that, that, that whatever comes of what they did, just imagine if they had been cool enough to realize how little they'll care in 10 years or had they taken cues from all the people uh, previous like they, they just like they reacted from the from the place that they were in and it was like yeah they, they didn't react like 30 year olds or 40 year olds and as a result like they got shit done that i don't know like like we don't and and young filmmakers and and I, 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 everything young we worship youth but we make fun of its naivete like like wisdom is just is just is just it's just dying a little bit. It's just it's just going like yeah. It gets a little boring. I remember my dad. I was like I was like twenty five, and he was however old he was, and I I just couldn't believe how old my dad was. And I was like, and it was a legitimate question in my head. And I was like, if it was if he was any other human being, I wouldn't I would know that this would be tacky and rude. And then I might get punched or yeah yeah just but that it would be hurtful. But it's like your dad's here. Just like fuck it. This is the guy I can ask this question because fuck him. Um, and I was like, so now that you're this old, like you ever, are you, are you like scared that you're going to die and stuff? Like, which yeah. was like really gnawing at me as it, as a, in my a guy in my twenties, like, I was like really thinking about like what it must be to have to think about death all the time. And I remember my dad being like, eh, eh, eh. guys, kind of been alive a long time and. Oh, he starts to get kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> depressed. Yeah. Well, I wasn't depressed. I don't really characterize my dad as a depressed guy. Well, I mean, I, I, I disagree with you on what, in what you're saying. And, and I used to think that. I just don't think that's true. And I used to think it, though. I know people think that, but when, they're, when I've been numbed down, I've thought that. But I don't think that's actually it for me. Well, I, I certainly don't want to... I don't want to make the mistake of going like I figured it out. That's the one law by which the universe goes. Yeah. I uh, keep going because I know that there's this other. You just. Uh, I think the beauty of it is you stumble upon something really beautiful in, in your. The, the, I, you know, man. I like kind of like came out of the closet with this Ramdas stuff. You know, I have a guru, and I I'm really I feel really good, and I used to feel really bad, and I feel really really good. And I feel love in my life, and I feel really good. I know it's like it feels lame to say that, but uh, but I used to think like what you the way you're talking. I used to think it was like an infinite Mordor scape or something, and that it just goes on forever, kind of never ending Mordor scape. And in fact, maybe it just gets worse and worse. And then what happens is all this fucking shit the hippies are saying. You hear it, and 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 you, from that Mordor scape, and you think, shut the fuck up. That can't be real. It's not real. But then you kind of, that's the entry way, you know? And then you start, like, if you're, like what I would do is kind of like, a, you know, I'm going to be like this, like, anthropologist. I'm going to go into this, and I'm going to find out where it's not real by being part of it. And then you start realizing it's real. And then that thing that you're talking about that ha afflicts a great many people, which is that sense of, like, oh, fuck, my brain's rotting. I'm getting old. It just gets boring. This is terrible. Oh, my, like, that thing. You realize, oh my God, it doesn't have to be like that for real. And now you're in a real predicament because you either have to, when people are saying things like what you're saying, you have to decide like, oh my God, am I going to be the fucking guy who says that thing? And, or am I going to keep my mouth shut about it? Or am I going to be like, roll, like be cynical or try to tune into like that? And now it's like, fuck, I, I have to say it because it's incredibly unethical if I don't. And you know what I mean? It's incredibly unethical to be like, no, I know what you mean, you know, or, or to not say anything. It's actually, it, do, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, it, it can, if it can, and that's okay. I mean, and that, the, 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 the lineage I've become part of, the paradigm is not one incarnation. It's like we get many, many, many of these things. And that is not to say to take it for granted, but it's also to say in this one, you really just might be miserable for the entire incarnation. Mm -hmm. But... What's, and I, they, they, they don't say that with like a, you really might be miserable for this entire incarnation if you don't do what they say. They just might be, say like, yeah, this one, it might be a sad one for you. And, 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 and that's okay. That's okay not to be like, no, you, could be, like, you should be better. They're like, no, this is a perfect universe. 
wish there was more standardized language about mood and stuff. I feel like I feel like if I answer the question honestly, like "How are you doing?" in a bar uh, to someone, and like like very often people will be like, "Oh, you're so hard on yourself," or "Hope you get better," and yeah. all that stuff. And I'll be like, Fuck "Well, that. wait, what? You don't understand. I'm incredibly happy." Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like like I. I, I, I'm just ashamed of myself by default. Like I'm filled with shame, which is like a, 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 a mechanism. Like it's like my plumbing like needs yeah. to be like, like wrenched a little bit in therapy and stuff. Cause I was just like just flooded. I'm just, I just run on shame. Uh, like, like you, a device could run on water. It could run on steam. It could run on oil. Right. Like, it's like, like I just like, uh, like just shame. Just like, like f- is the lubricant. Shame is the fucking like. Uh, well, the, another way to put that would be the thing you currently think you are, thinks it runs on shame. <laughs> you know, but that's not re- you know the the idea is like really the thing that you are, is much bigger. Than a, th- a, th- a thing that thinks it runs on shame. Part of what, there are, another way to put it would be, there is shame here. Or there is shame. Another way to put it, it's called noting in Buddhism. You just watch it. Shame. You, so like, and then what you're doing is like something that Sharon Salzberg calls add-ons. So shame happens. You feel shame. That's it. There is shame. But then the mind starts attaching all this shit to the shame. Right? So now it becomes like this sort of, recursion it just it goes on and on and on with the mind saying oh because of their shame this must be this and that must be that and that must be that and that so that's called in buddhism the poisoned arrow you get hit by the arrow that's the first pain shame usually it's a triggering thing it's not even shame it's like something happens and the event is the arrow and then that then shame and then all the add-ons but really it's just shame there is shame here in this field of matter called my human body and then that's it you just yeah. sit with it. And then when the add-ons come, all this other stuff, too, it's like, okay, that's there, too. But to say, I'm a machine that runs on shame I, is true now. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I don't, yeah, I didn't mean to proclaim it as, like, an, uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely, I know, man, I'm sorry. I, the I, I, whole I, thing yeah. is, like, an expression of, like, yeah. like, I am changing and I'm going to change. Yes. Like, I am not resigned to the way that I run shit, but... I like, yeah, I just kind of like, I, I just feel like, I feel like, like it's, it, it, it just like it, people go like, they listen to me talk and then they go like, oh, he's so depressed and he's so sad or he's so, you know, and then I go like, well, no, if you talk like the way I'm talking, then that might be indicative that th- these might be words that you would only say if you were about to put a gun in your mouth. Yes. But like, because of how fucked up I am, like, this is like, like you know, these are my metaphors, and this is my language, and this is this is my baseline. Yeah, it, it does need to be improved and lightened, but that's the same as like somebody who's middle class saying, "I need to be rich." Like the middle class person is not, like my my middle line is just there's a lugubriousness to the to the language yeah. because it's based on shame because it, like I, I i went into my therapist's office and it was like she, she's like how did how did how did it go with nigel and all this stuff and and i was like he's good he's better so i saw so him in a much better mood i'm feeling very good now nigel's feeling better because there, our last session nigel was very sick and i was very very upset and i was like i was i was saying like i have this like i don't know where to put this rage Mm. and shame like i can't get rid of it and she she we spent the entire hour doing all these exercises of like going underneath this layer and that layer and all this stuff and then we 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 went out on the sidewalk and walked like a fucking python sketch and whatever the fuck and like all of it had different effects and things but and it wasn't about it working or not working, but the bottom line is it came back to the office and I was like, she's like, how's that? And I'm like, it's, I'm, it, you, it's on fire. Like, like it, it, it th- thanks for blowing on it or putting a blanket over it for a second, but the blanket is flammable and it's like, there is a fire. I can't, I just want to beat something to death. Mm-hmm. I want to kill. I want to hurt. I want to 
finish something. I want to hurt something. Yeah. And I and I and I know I'm not supposed to want that and I can't blah blah blah. And 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 you know, we got through that session, so then a week later I come I come back in. Now during that week, Nigel gets better. So then I sit in the chair and she goes, like, how are you how is it going? Well Nigel's better, so I feel fucking great. I walked into that room on a rainbow. I was like one of those days where I'm like, well, this is 200 yeah. bucks wasted because I feel great. Um, but And then she's like, well, so, see, making progress, right? And I'm like, and then the whole session is based on the fact that my response to that was like, no, no progress made whatsoever. Absolutely none. Yeah. The only thing that happened is my dog got better. I didn't learn how to handle anything. And she's like, no, but you, you when when your cat got sick you punched a wall yes this time did you punch a wall no i did not so we would call that uh progress for the wall masons union like 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 if jack the ripper chokes a hooker to death uh on monday and then on wednesday like he just sits in a pub and th- and draws pictures in his notebook about of dead hookers Great day for hookers. Great amount of progress from Monday to Wednesday. Great day for, for his victims, yeah. not for him, not in my opinion. And so we fought and fought. I mean, I fought. <laughs> I was like, but then by the end of the session, she was like, she basically was like, the whole time was like making me realize look how hard you're fighting. You don't want to say that you are better. Well, I mean, maybe you're not. And then the the other question is like but she didn't want it. she was like she was like asking me like does your God believe in incremental change? Uh, is your God willing to? Does your God think that a little bit of progress is 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 good enough? Uh, I was like the honest answer is no. No, I do not worship a God that gives out medals for for doing better than yesterday by a skosh. I don't, and, and, and that's because I created that God and et cetera. And you it's created like, the God? I sure did, motherfucker. Damn. Created you, yours you too. That? What is that, like a What's 3D up, Kyle? Is that a 3D printer? How do you do it? I fucking pray. How do you create a God? I pray. That's how you do it, just prayer? Dear God, make a God for Duncan. What God did you pray to to make the God? Uh, the master God, root God, super user God. Based God. Man, you got to start listening to Lil B. That's, you know, not to give you a prescription. I, I know, you turn me on to Lil B. I love you're, Lil B. You're doing great. But, yeah, the answer is to, to, you know, say thank you, based God, and hope for his blessings. And then, you know, who knows? Not that you need anyone's blessings or anything like that, but. Have you heard Lil B? Squeaky chair? Oh, okay. We heard his feelings. You. The other thing I, was, I keep thinking is like, man, what is your definition of, I mean, forget the whole God thing. What's your definition of I? Like, what do you think you are? Definition of what? Of ah. you, of you. Oh. What do you think you are? Uh, let me answer that. Thank you. He's great. You're great. What else? Like, what do you think you are? What are you? I'm a, f- a fragment of an explosion of a of a thing that that uh, only knew that being was better than not being, and uh, yeah, I'm a shard with like different amounts of this and that in it than other shards because it's not uniform. How big are you? Shard sized. What's that? Is like your human Six size? Six foot, two forty five. <laughs> <laughs> That you think that's your size, your no, body? I think I, if you are you getting it, do I see myself on a kind of map as like somehow more important than other people? No, not that at all. Oh. I'm saying like, you know, when you're when you start self referencing in any situation, you already know this, I know, but you start self referencing, you immediately are stuck with like you talk about you, when I say this, it's gonna sound like I'm saying you're you talk about yourself a lot, but we all do. You talk about yourself a lot. I'm this thing, I'm that thing, this is what I am, right. this is how I feel, this is who I am, this is what I am. And then you, you start playing this game where you're like, okay, okay, who's talking about me? Like, what's that? The thing that's saying what Dan is. What's that? You know, the watcher is what they call it, or the witness. Yeah, I don't know. That I mean, thing's interesting, huh? It's yeah. like, what is that? It's this thing watching you. 
And it's making this comment. You're making a commentary. It's watching the commentary, in fact. But there's I will tell you, that reminds me of a thing that my therapist pointed out because I was, uh, I was saying, like, look, I think the thing is, the problem is, like, because she said, does your guy have standards or just, or does he have compassion? Does he just have standards or does he have compassion? I said, I honestly, honest answer. Even though I'm gonna get fucking yelled at for it, I could lie and say he has compassion and then be like, like, what? no, I'll tell you the truth. My God has just standards. Why? Why doesn't he have compassion? Because compassion is the idea that the God, God like was like rooting for you, and that's an insane thing to do. And 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 so he's, he he it was like 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 those 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 AI those robots the the on the YouTube videos. The guy from MIT that created them. You know how he expresses his love for that thing, his pride in that thing, and his desire that it be the best robot he can be? His foot comes into frame, and he tries to kick it the fuck over as hard as he can because he created it for the purpose of proving that it can overcome that, and yeah. it can walk like a god, no matter and if, 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 if God's foot comes in and goes like, no, fuck you. You thought you knew everything about walking. Now now fuck you. Right. And then, and then the robot goes like this, and then it starts walking, and that's when you're watching YouTube, and you go, shit, we're going to we're going to be hunted to extinction <laughs> yeah. because because you're recognizing superiority not not you're not going like oh look at it stumble you're like oh shit that motherfucker knows how to walk right. when it gets kicked anyways the 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 i was trying to explain that to her and then she was like and she was like but what so so how did you not meet god's standards when nigel got sick and was like because i like i already learned this shit and I said, I said, you know, I recognize it. I was doing this script. I got to finish this script because, like you said, I'm sitting on this script because it's my last chance to make myself miserable. And then once I finish this script, like, now I can, what I'm afraid of doing is moving on and, like, dealing with life. You know, instead of just, like, sucking my thumb and going, like, oh, I got a deadline. So it's kind of similar to Minecraft. Like, it's just, like, you just dig a little hole where you control whether you're miserable or you control the cause of your misery, you think. And then I was like, okay, finish the script because you know what? It's time to move on because Cody might get sick. Anyone might get sick. The, 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 the Syria might explode. Yeah. Like everyone might get leukemia on my block. Like I might find a ball in my nuts and a nut in my balls. And like, you, the, the, it's time to join that fray. It's called life. And I had made up my mind that I was ready to do that. And then God gave me the littlest, tiniest little nibble of, of life's caviar called your dog is like trembling. And I was like, yes. and then she stopped me and said, all right, stop right there. Stop. The characterization of your dog trembling and vomiting and needing to be taken to the hospital as a little nibble of caviar is called a distortion. Like you're you you have chosen to believe in a god that has bigger fish to fry than your dog, and the things that make you upset. So that's what I want you to think about: is like 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 why you know, you know that the god that you chose isn't the actual one true one. <laughs> you know it's a model. Why would you choose your model to be so fucking like? Distorted. I don't mean to do this, but my question would be: Who's choosing? Who is this? I, th th that's well, I'm saying, I, I, isn't isn't this like a kind of like chicken egg thing where you go if you're a miserable person, you create a miserable god, and the god create you know you. Well, you, you have to. You that's like the god thing is like a few. You're just like a few. Like whether there's a god or not a god, you're still still dealing with this like interesting thing that happens with a human, which is there is this field of awareness. Well, if right? you're a miserable person, you have a miserable map of the universe. Well, you have the miserable person. The miserable person is within a field of awareness. There's a field of... So like in the Bhagavad Gita, they say there is the field and the knower of the field. So what happens with humans is we get caught up in the, in the field. So... And then that's when all the things start happening. Like you get caught up in the field. So you're like, when I get caught up in my field, myself, my life, my self, I become selfish, literally selfish, because I'm deeply caught in my own self, like deeply caught in my, my own self. That's selfishness. And so, but then when you start playing around with this concept of like, wait a minute, wait a minute, there is awareness here that seems to be watching this thing happen, right? Uh -huh. That is, is, where the, is where it gets interesting. Because when you start like playing around with that field of awareness, like you, you know, you look in the mirror, you can't look back. You can't. You you have to look in the mirror to see yourself. You can't see yourself right now. You ha It's a similar problem. This is 
this this field of awareness what is it I, is it consciousness what is it but within that field all the drama is happening right the drama is happening within the field of awareness and the field of awareness is watching so the practice or one of the practices mindfulness is not to change anything not to change anything except to watch now we're watching in other words we are trying to shift ourselves from being the field to identifying with the knower of the field and so the concept is moving from individual identity to soul to the soul identity or the I like that. universal consciousness that's the practice did you f fucking fart i think it was a fart not the chair <laughs> oh no no I, it was a smell i smelled sulfur that was a <laughs> well that could be because you're talking all this pagan talk no but i really like that that's interesting it's just sort of like awareness of awareness like like, like identification with the awareness yeah that's it. That's because it. if there's a camera there to make you feel ashamed, if you look fat from a certain angle, stop reacting to that by like like people walk by a camera in a department store window and like we get all confused and we start waving our arms and stuff. Become the camera yeah. for a second. Like th that's what you're trying to do anyway. Yeah, that's that's. You're sitting there wondering how fat you are or what you're doing wrong. All this stuff. Like oh. The, the invitation is to become a more objective point of view because other right. people will enter that frame. Yeah. You'll become a character. Yeah. That's and you'll it. become a shard along that, with everybody else. Like, like, like you put your money where your mouth is instead of like reacting to seeing yourself on the yeah. scoreboard by getting more obsessed Got with it. your bald spot. You go, holy shit. I'm a, I'm looking at myself from the perspective of a, a stadium. Spot. He has a bald spot. So does he. So does him. So, yeah. so does everyone. Who else does? Yeah. Like, and, and and what yeah. what is it, you know like 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 yeah. That's that's very interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. And and the only thing is, it's like they wouldn't say you are but you you become that. They say you are that, and that thing has become entangled in this thing. Yeah. So it's not that you become it. It's actually that's what you are. No, that's what you were in the first place. Otherwise, you wouldn't. We wouldn't talk the way we do. We yeah. go like, oh, I'm such a piece of shit. Like. Well, it sounds like you're talking about a character. Yeah, that's it. Like, like, so you're already David Milch. Like, you're yeah. not. You've never been Al Swearingen. Like, like, that's like it. that. You, you were always David Milch. Like, yeah. like, like now, now what you have to do is remember that you're not like on. Uh, you know that there is no Deadwood and that you're. It's a fucking set. And that's that you're, exactly it. Self remembering. Yeah, remembering your true identity. You know, you're David. Got to remember those Feetons. What? Hey, David Milch. <sighs> Me being David Milch, man. All right. Well, I feel you like know, I'm David Milch right now. I sure wish we I'm could keep this going a, on forever, but I'm going through a David <laughs> Milch situation. Who is David Milch? I feel like David. Do you feel David Milch? <laughs> I'm sure he. I don't know if he exists. I mean, I can imagine him I just feel, based on his name. I feel but Milch. Who is Milch? What is Milch? Where is Milch? Yeah, I here. Feel, oh, that I feel like. This I is am David Milch. I feel like David Milch. Do not mock me with. <laughs> feel like David Milch to you. <laughs> I will. I feel like David Milch. <laughs> That's it. I arrive in the places I feel like David Milch <laughs> where I feel welcome. Or I'm feeling David Milch. I'm feeling David Milch. David Milch is not <laughs> feeling you. <laughs> David Milch will depart. That's white noise, man. You guys fucked it. What'd you, you scared David Milch away? He's here. He's always here watching. I, well, he, he, David Milch is in my heart. Yeah. As long as we remember. Just remember him. Remember. Remember, remember me. Milch. Remember. Did you guys see Coco? It's about remembering people. The uh, sign language gorilla? You'll never forget Coco. No. She will. Br that gorilla has made me cry so many times. I saw a gif of Robin Williams c tickling Coco. It'll kill you every time. And I, I got all misty eyed because Coco was laughing and, and doing like this. And, and, and Robin was going, <laughs> Mindy. And, yeah. and it was <laughs> beautiful. I just said Jeff instead of GIF. I know, I noticed did, that. Did you did you guys think I was smart? 
Mm, you know, I, I, it's I, a graphic I, interface. I thought maybe Monster Palooza was sharing a hotel with uh, uh, W W I A C two dot HTML. So you were listening. I heard the GIF uh, pronunciation. Yeah. I meant Monster Palooza. Yeah, I heard that. You you went to a fucking convention and a what, what oh, you know what I I'm not I, it's not my job to be jealous care. of you I don't care no it is not your job <laughs> to care about me at all yeah no exactly. you don't get paid for caring I wasn't I wasn't put you know? here for that you I'll tell you what you were put here for Dave thank what? God oh my God back. David Milch Milch is back yeah because you me. talk some sense into Harmon he's really bumming my nuts. He's being mean. He's being, you know, Armin, be, you're being yeah, mean. Yeah, but you're that's what you're to supposed your to be. Rob right Schraub, you are written to antagonize Dan Harmon. I'm written. Yes, you I'm are written. written. Yeah. And not well. <laughs> you are a placeholder character. Oh, Jesus, well, Milch. Lighten really, up. Schraub's awesome. That's really What the fuck mean. are you doing? It's one of the sweetest guys on earth. He yeah. tweets dogs that are, they, they, he saves dogs. Duncan Trussell. I added you in the third draft of this reality in response to a network note. Jesus Christ, Melts, what the fuck? I was being sarcastic. Oh my God, I'm sarcastic? I'm like a sarcastic, shitty thought of yours? I wanted to teach them a lesson. Oh my God. For asking the writer to add I don't feel like intelligence. David Milch to you at all anymore. Excuse me? <laughs> I don't feel like David Milch at all. I think you. David Milch needs to get milched. That's yeah. the problem. No character can milch David Milch. <laughs> I milch you. What? Fuck. Hey, Who? David. Yes. Did you see? Uh, did you see Dread? The the ju Judge Dread. The Judge Dread movie. movie? Yeah. Did you yes. See it? Did you like it? I wrote it. You wrote it. I wrote the people that wrote it. Did you like them? I don't like any of my characters. Okay. Who wrote you, Milch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a question asked only on the page. For those off the page, no, there is no answer. There definitely isn't an answer. That's not an answer. That's a shit answer, Milch. You, Who wrote you? sit on the margins and between my brads and ponder your fate and your monologues. You don't understand how it works. Off oh. the page, no one asks those questions. Off the page, there is only Milch. So you just have always been forever? There was a time before Milch. BM? <laughs> BM? B BM, yes. <laughs> I'm, that's... Uh, that's a, uh, so BM was literally the time before you. Before You're the result of BM. It's a paradoxical expression. Have you ever thought of that, Milch? How's that feel? You're just a bowel movement, Milch. You're just a thing that the universe shat out and started writing characters. You got all milchy. Mm. Came out all milky. I feel unwelcome here. I will fade Go out. Go back to Melmac. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Melmac, Milch. Cool. You PM. guys scared Milch away again. PM. Post Milch. Yeah. I like it. Fucking Melmac, cat eating motherfucker. Angry old Milch. Yeah. Shumway. Skulking around Go the universe. Go away, Milch. What happened to David Milch? Did he, after he put his dick in the beans, did he. Who the fuck is David Milch? He's the creator of NYPD Blue and Deadwood. He put his dick in beans? Beans Beans is this woman that was like a set decorator on the <laughs> show. He's the craziest person yeah. I've never heard of. I can't remember. We, we were told an anecdote man. where David Milch, like, uh, at the at the craft service table, like, or at, or at a party or something like he... I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, maybe it was... Okay, yeah, I'm speaking out of school then. I was, like, probably, like, from... Uh, I don't know. It was like yeah, that, you were you you were hanging out with Chris McKenna. But there were a bunch of people that saw it. Dave David David Milch put his dick in some beans. What? And then uh, how does that ruin you? Or how does that get out there? 
Oh, at a party. well, because there was a bunch of because he was like it basically like he took some beans from the craft service table and then he like he like had his dick in beans and then like <laughs> and um, somebody said, uh, and everybody's like waiting in line to get their food and then he's just like uh, doing that and, and everybody's like, uh, can do you mind? The way I was introduced I to the, the concept was that there there were, there were writers who were, who were saying like they among each other like they use the expression like oh man I really put the put my dick in the beans <laughs> like to mean like is it supposed to feel good I is bet that it feels good no it's a, well I mean it's, a, it's no he wasn't doing it to feel good he was doing a bit about like and I I know you have more questions about why he did it but I don't know but it's like their perspective was that he had did it and then and then it was like there was a weird silence and because the guy in charge put his dick in beans and then. And then, and then, so then thereafter, it, it it was an expression among these writers of like, uh, oh shit, I I, I over I over beans. I overreached, I yeah. uh, I uh, I was I was feeling my oats, or I I I kind of like, uh, I just, I just sort of like I just sort of fell on my face, or but 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 I did it because I was, <laughs> yeah, like, makes me I wanted like, to be feel like the scenario is like Milch was like trying to be funny. Whips out his dick, puts it in the beans, and everybody kind of went, "Oh!" They were like, yep. at the floor," yep. and then he went, "Oh, too far! All right, I guess we're not gonna laugh at me putting my dick in the beans." Okay, um, what did you bring to the table? Bananas. But yeah, I do I'd think it would. I mean, not that it's 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 doesn't matter because it's really missing the point. But I I do think that like it would probably feel good to put your dick in warm beans. or cold. Don't even think about it. Warm or cold. Okay, great point. It's not. Don't even think about it. What do you mean? Of course, warm. Well, well, uh, warm, a- warm beans. Yeah, cold. Be- you want to put your dick in warm beans, not cold beans. But that's also, not, that's- anything. Wait, do, you, do you ever do food sex stuff like? Uh, no. oh, put that, I I tried that in my twenties because you know you see it in like Playboy videos or whatever, and they're like, oh, let's get out the honey and the whipped cream, and then it's like, okay, yeah, I did. It, t- it took one time to. I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, this is. It gets gross. all pubey. Yeah, it all it gets all pubey. Everything You're like sticky. Like who wants to? I was like, like if if someone came up to you and said like, hey, you want to eat a Hershey's kiss off of Steve Levy's arm? I wouldn't be like, oh no, yeah, yeah, I'm about to come. No. So why would you think that your speak for yourself. your girlfriend would suddenly become sexy if she had whipped cream? Like like now like like whipped cream is usually experienced in a contained environment. It's on top of yeah. frozen ice cream and stuff. You put it on a tit, and then it's like now there's you get to see what whipped cream is really like, made spill, of. Like so soda on your like linoleum and then you don't get to it right away and then you walk across it <laughs> with your socks and it's got like dog hair on yeah. it. Yeah. Now add cum. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about. All right. Well, should have started there, but uh, that's an ep- another episode of Harmontown. Uh uh I don't know the the list of names that Jeff knows. Um uh thank you for <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Church, for taking photos. Thank you, thank you, Zach, the audio maniac, for being an audio person. Uh, thank you, Chris Baroff. Thank you, Sarah Hill, for uh, for for making sure everybody can see everything. Thank you, Kevin Day, wherever you are, for being the Alfred uh, uh, off off site from Arkham Island, uh, 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 making sure that it gets uh, disseminated. Uh, what's that? Oh, we're going to be in Boston and Long Island uh, on a date that I... Uh, 22nd, 23rd. June 22nd, 23rd. I don't understand how time works. I tell time by seasons of television shows and uh, ex-wives. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know what next week is. We're At some point, we're going to be in Boston and Long Island. I don't... June 22nd, June 23rd. Really? June? Yeah, it's coming oh. up, man. Why even promote? That's a million years from now. We're, it's we're, a million years from now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, David Milch. Thank, thank you, Milch, for writing you, us. Thank you, Steve Levy, for letting Duncan Trussell in when he got here. Thank Thanks, you, Duncan Steve. Trussell, for coming. Thanks Don't be dissuaded by this. We'll have an uh, next time you get invited to do the show. I loved it. Uh, you, you'll, there'll probably be an audience. But uh, even if there's not, you would love it anyway. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, let's do it. More of these. Thank you, Rob Schraub, for giving me my iPad back. Uh, Could have charged it. Say thank you, based God. Thank you, based God, for helping me win the NBA playoffs. Pretty good. <laughs> Can you get cursed by him if you're not in the NBA? Man, he's very care- the base God. It doesn't throw that those curses. He out drops. Casually. He drops like some sick, 
sick bass, man. <laughs> it's not. It's not even my place to talk about it. It's good you said that. Though. It's sick. All right. It's well, milched. That's it's all milchy. That's it. Enjoy. Enjoy your lives. I'll see you when I'm working out tomorrow on Instagram. Uh, I just try, try to realize how dumb you are. <laughs> <laughs>